Welcome to Covenant Church. We are so glad that you're here in the building with, with your family. For those of you that are watching online, thanks for tuning in today. I can't think of a better place to be than right here on a Sunday morning. I am excited to kick off this brand new series called On a Mission. And here's why. I, I just know so many Christians and people that aren't Christians that don't have one. They don't, they don't have a mission. They don't feel like they have a purpose when they wake up in the morning. And my prayer for each and every person here, each and every person watching online today is that you would live like a man or a woman on a mission. That's my prayer for every student. That's my prayer for every teacher is that you would live like you are a person on a mission. One of the missions that I've had lately is to become a better husband. One of the particular areas of focus that I have to zoom in on is, is my ability to listen to my wife, uh, particularly during NBA playoffs. Sometimes it just doesn't translate well. I'm doing multitasking. You know, I'm emailing, I'm watching the game, and my wife will ask me to pick up something. I'm like, yeah, 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 I got it. And so uh, one time my wife asked me to get her a bacon gouda with no cheese. Yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. You already know the rest of the story. I came home with a bacon gouda, but it had cheese. Now, here's the deal. I remember saying no cheese, but I can't prove that. So now it's a court case. You know what I'm saying? So now it's me versus Starbucks, my word versus their word. I said it. So what I have learned to do as a, at the veteran stage that I'm in in marriage is I said, Bay, if you want some, I need you to get it in written form. I need you to text me exactly what you want. I'm going to read it out loud to the person. And if they mess it up, that's on them. All right. So uh, I said, Bay, can I get you a drink today? What do you need? She's like, yeah, get this from Starbucks. She sends me the text text message. I'm feeling great. I'm like, this, this is going to be a W today. I'm an amazing husband. I read it out loud to the barista at Starbucks, and they asked me a question back that sent fear into my soul. <laughs> I read off the order, and the barista says, sir, hot or cold? I said, what? <laughs> what you mean? What you mean? It can be hot or cold? What? I said, I got a line behind me, people honking. I said, let me call her real quick. No answer. She wanted to get in the shower. Okay, you want to take a shower now, huh? All right, so I said, all right, so, 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 oh my God, what, what, what do I do? I got to make a decision. I need the Holy Spirit to like use me, right? I'm like trying to figure out what to do. And so, because I'm a veteran now, I said, let me get both. I need a hot and a cold. I need both. I need both. Sir, you want both? That's right. I said both. I said both. Dave Ramsey be very disappointed in our, in our Starbucks budget, but he don't know my wife. So that's it. Dave, stay about my business, okay? I'm a man on a mission. I will be back with, with one, one of two drinks. Babe, you got options today. I mean, it's interesting when we find ourselves focused on a mission. It's amazing what we can accomplish when we really want to do something. The question I want to ask you today is, does your life have a mission? Does your life have a mission? There is a massive difference between your life having a mission and your life having a, a vision. Vision is what, okay? That's the goal. You're trying to aspire to accomplish something. But mission is why. I mean, this is, this is about purpose. Sometimes you can work your butt off, but you don't know why. You, you, don't, you don't have a thing that gets you out of bed in the morning. You're just doing stuff, but you don't have a, have a why. Sometimes what we can have is a family-given mission. Um, I was doing some reading about Elon Musk this week, and, and there's an article that just came out uh, from his dad. And it's just such an interesting relationship that one of the most successful people in the world has an odd relationship with his father. This is, it's just very interesting, and, and you can kind of see how he's kind of become who he is based off of his family and, and the family dynamic. And so sometimes what can happen in our family nucleus, even Christian ones, is we can put some unhealthy expectations on our children that they could never really live up to. And so all of a sudden, their mission in life has just become to impress you. And, and it becomes this thing. I, I can't tell you how many successful people I know are still trying to impress dad. I'm like, bro, you 55 years old. But some things are just never good enough. 
So we, we can have a family given mission. Sometimes we can just have a culture given mission. And the culture given mission can come from social media. We could just be scrolling all day. Okay, this is what I need to do. This is where I need to go on vacation. And this is, and sometimes the culture given mission happens at our job. All right, my mission in life is just to climb the ladder. Well, has anyone ever stopped to ask you, is your ladder leaning up against the right building? I mean, you're climbing this ladder and you're exhausted, but you don't even know why you're climbing that ladder. So what can happen? I mean, some of us are just looking for a title. I mean, we just find ourselves on this culture given mission. And then I, I think that you and I can get to this very, very special place where we have a God given mission. A God given mission can give you what money never could. Oh, a God given mission can give you what a relationship never could, what a title never could. Because when you've got a God given mission, there is something so important about knowing why God puts you on the planet. Like, why put you on the planet? Because when we talk about a God-given mission, there is macro and there is micro. So there are God-given macro missions. This is, what, this is what all of us should be doing. This is corporate. This is for everybody. Uh, one of those macro God-given missions is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us, gave us, this is all of us, the ministry of reconciliation. This is, a, this is for everybody. And that is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is all of us. All of us should be on mission to go, I'm an ambassador for Christ everywhere I go. When my school, at my job, at my neighborhood, my gym, at the grocery store, I am God's appeal to the planet to say, hey, you should be reconciled with God. Another God-given macro mission is in Matthew 28, verse 19. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. What should we all be doing? What's the macro mission for all of us? Well, we should be trying to make disciples of all nations, that we should be trying to help other people become a follower of Jesus. Make no mistake about it today. I think every single person here should be following Jesus. I think that's the best decision that anybody can make in their life unashamedly. That's, that's our macro mission. But then there are God-given micro missions. This is, this is personal. Like this is, this is just for you. Did you know that God put you on the planet to do something Oh, one of my favorite scriptures is Colossians 4, verse 17. Here's what it says. And say to Archippus, be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. Be sure to carry out the ministry the Lord gave you. We ain't in the us category no more. No, no, no. We're talking about you. What do we know about Archippus? Okay, uh, what scholars believe is that Archippus was uh, to believed to be the son of Philemon and Aphia, close friends of Paul's. They had the church of Colossae in their home. And so there is something about Archippus that catches the apostle Paul's attention. It, it, it's interesting. He writes an entire letter to the church. Hey, everybody, this is what I want everybody to be thinking about. These are some of the problems that we want to solve. But now I just want to zoom in. Let me holler at Archippus just for a minute. Hey, Archippus, this ain't for everybody. It's just for you. Make sure you carry out the ministry God gave you. 
It's like what we don't know and know at the same time about Archippus is that he had something going on in his life that could have made him miss his potential. But the Apostle Paul is like, I got to take a break from the whole church just to talk to Archippus just for a moment. Hey, Archippus, I know you got a lot going on in your life, but be sure to carry out the ministry that the Lord gave you. Sometimes God gives you a mission, and we get mad that God didn't give it to other people. God gave, God put something on your heart. God put water wells on your heart. God put homelessness on your heart. God put social justice on your heart. God put education on your heart. God put mental health care on your heart. God put marketplace ministry on your heart. Um, I got to speak for um, a, a very successful guy the other day, and he just said, hey, man, Ryan, would you keep me in prayer? I'm, I'm trying to, I feel like God's giving me a mission for the entertainment industry. I feel like I have a multifaceted mission that includes online education, it includes business, it includes ministry, it includes professional sports. And here's the deal. It's not always easy to explain to other people. Sometimes we are waiting for other people to understand our mission before we begin to walk it out. Sometimes we just want to be understood. Ladies and gentlemen, you follow Jesus Christ the most misunderstood person in human history. That day may never come. So don't be frustrated when what God called you to do wasn't a conference call, okay? It may not have been a Zoom. He invited everybody else to get on the call. No, no, no. He called you to do it. Be sure to carry out the ministry and the mission that the Lord gave you. You may not be understood. Everybody else may not get on board. Sometimes we get mad at other people because they ain't jumping on our thing. No, God called you to do that. Archippus. And, and I love, because I got on a DeMarcus a couple of weeks ago, but, but there's no Archippus here today. I can guarantee you that. Archippus. <laughs> Be sure to carry out the ministry that the Lord gave you. Here's, here's what I hope would be said of all of us. It's a phrase that comes from Joshua chapter 22, verse 22. And it, and it says, You have done all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. And you have obeyed me in everything I commanded. For a long time now, to this very day, you have not deserted your fellow Israelites, but have carried out the mission of the Lord, your God gave you. My open prayer for all of us is that one day when we meet the King of Kings, he would look us in the eyes and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That you would know your mission and that you will have accomplished your mission. If you're going to be a person that walks in their God-given mission, you have to, number one, get a God-given mission. You got to get a God-given mission. I mean, and here's the deal. Not everyone hears from God on a regular basis. And I get that. It, it can be somewhat elusive. It can be very challenging. But I love what Pastor Amy said a couple of years ago, and it, and it has stuck with me ever since. She said that you cannot be the type of person that wants to hear from God with your Bible closed. It's going to be very hard to hear from God with your Bible shut because when your Bible's open, you know what God sounds like. That's how you're going to get a mission. Now, here's the deal. I have talked to so many people that have a desire to hear from God. They go, Ron, I just, it's like God isn't talking to me. He's, he's just, and, and this is the question I always ask. Have you been reading your Bible lately? Like, not in a judgmental way. It's just, I'm, I'm just curious. Like, we're trying to dissect what, 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 what's some, why there seems to be some blockage there. Like, have you been reading your Bible lately? Nah, nah, not, not really. Not, not, not really. Okay, okay. Well, man, I think that that's a, that's a place to start. But Ryan, I'm busy. I, I, just, I just ain't really got time to get in the Word like that. I, I get it. I, I'm very familiar with busyness. I get that. It's just what I marvel at 
are the things that we make time for that just aren't helping us hear from God. Like some of the people that tell me that they busy, they got time for Breaking Bad. They got time for Stranger Things season four. Some of the people that will tell me they ain't got time to hear from God can tell me every single detail about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp and how much she owe him. And I'm like, how do you know all this stuff? That took some time. You didn't dissect the whole case. And do you work for his lawyer team? It's amazing. I mean, as busy as we all are, I'm just saying, I think we make time for what we value the most. And so what I got to encourage you to do this weekend is to value hearing from God. You got to put a value on it. You, you got to be the kind of person that says, I value hearing from God more than I value hearing from the rest of this world. I value it. I have made a decision that I am going to make time for God. And here's what I believe with all my heart. If you will give God your attention, he will give you his direction. But some of us, we're just, we're just distracted. And again, I'm not saying that we're not busy. I don't think we have a scheduling problem. I think sometimes we have a values problem. Sometimes we want a supernatural experience without being willing to do some very practical habits that lead to them. Sometimes God speaks through his word. Sometimes God speaks through his people. Sometimes God knocks you off your horse like he did the apostle Paul to speak to you. Sometimes something negative happens to you and it's a breakup, it's a job loss, and it, and it feels like it really knocked you off your horse. But if you're still long enough in the midst of a crisis, you might just hear the whisper of God. So you're thinking like, why did this happen to me? I would just pause in that moment and go, Lord, are you speaking to me? Sometimes God meets you in a lonely place, in a dry place, in a desert place. In fact, that's what happened with Moses. Um, actually, for the remainder of our time together, I'd like us to zoom into the story of Moses to learn how he managed his mission and perhaps a part of Moses' story that is often not told. Uh, here's how God gave Moses his micro mission. Exodus 3 verse 7, it says, then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So, uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the Moses story, uh, Moses has just murdered somebody. And the scripture says that he hid this person in the sand. He's trying to hide some things. He's on the run. He is Egypt's most wanted, okay? And so he finds himself in a desert, and God meets him there anyways, Find, tracks down a murderer and says, I still got a plan for your life. Uh, it, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to go liberate my people. I have heard their cry. And, and here is, it, you got to see how, how Moses responds to his mission. Verse 11 says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? <laughs> Don't we do that with our mission sometimes? Hey, God, nice idea. I don't think you actually know me, okay? You must be looking for somebody. Yeah, who am I? You do realize, like, I have my picture posted on every door. But, like, they're looking for me. You who am I? His next response to, to God's mission 
and call on his life is found in Exodus 4, verse 1. It says, Then Moses answered, But behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, The Lord did not appear to you. Now he's questioning his credibility. He's going, look, look, come on, come on, God. And then verse 10, he says, But Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and, and of tongue. Sometimes God gives you a mission and you want to give it back. Return to sender, okay? Like, I ain't got time for guys to listen. I don't, I don't have enough talent, credibility. Like, trust me, you do not want me going to talk to a vitriolic leader who will cut my head off in a minute, okay? Like, like sometimes God gives us a micro mission. And we go, mm, nah, I'm good. Especially if your mission includes loving your enemy. Especially if, if your mission includes showing kindness to your ex. What we hope is that God would give us a mission that is convenient. It rarely is. It, and then in Exodus 4, verse 13, Moses keeps it all the way 100 with God. Scripture tells us, but he said, oh my Lord, please send someone else. Okay, tell us how you really feel, Moses. Like this is, he's being brutally honest. He's like, hey, like, I, we, who am I? You don't want me. He's trying to convince God that it's not him. Now he's just like, I'm out. Pick somebody else. Have you ever gotten a mission from God and you instantly thought of somebody else that would be better at it? You ever been on social media and thought, yeah, they should be saying this, not me? Yeah, 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 like, like they, they should be the person, and I'm not going to be the person. Exodus 4, verse 14 is, is a, it's a tough verse in, in the movie that Moses is living. It says, then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Listen, I don't know where you are in your life, but let me tell you where you don't want to be. You don't want to be in a place where the anger of the Lord is kindling against you. Okay, that's a bad day. It says, is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you both what to do. That's verse 14. Moses is going, hey, you got the wrong person. I'm not talented enough. I don't have enough credibility. God's ang anger kindles against him and he says, but I got somebody that's going to support you. He tells, he tells Moses in verse 14, Aaron's on his way. Now, here's what I find remarkable. Verse 27, it says, the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. God, you already told Moses that Aaron was on the way, but it took you 13 verses to even tell Aaron to even go meet Moses, which means a couple of things. Either A, God is not confined by time, so he could go to the future and talk to Aaron and then come back to Moses and go, this is what Aaron going to do. Or B, he just trusted that Aaron would always say yes. That's what happens when you're so faithful, God can count on you. Now, here's what's very interesting to me about the narrative of Moses. Moses gets all the press. It's the story of Moses is going to go liberate the people out of Egypt. Now, but Aaron has become a, a focal point of my biblical study in 2022. It's interesting. If you just go to BibleGateway.com and you just type in the word Moses and Aaron, you'd be surprised how much their names come up together. But Aaron, it's almost like he's behind the scenes a little bit. But I, I just, I want you to see that God often spoke to Moses and Aaron. Exodus 7 verse 2, it says, you shall speak all that I command you and your brother Aaron shall tell Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go out of his land. Which, if I'm Aaron, I'm a little bit salty about this, right? Hey, Moses, God told you to go talk to Pharaoh. So now God's telling you to tell me to go talk to Pharaoh? I can just see this plan out. Pharaoh over there, Moses right here. Aaron, go tell him what God said. I, I got your back. I'll be right here, bro. Let me know how that goes. Like, wait a minute. 
Aaron is the one putting his neck on the line, being the spokesperson for Moses slash God. (laughs) And I love what verse 6 says. It says, Moses and Aaron did so. They did just as the Lord commanded them. Now watch this. Now Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. If we are going to walk in our God-given mission, we have to not only, number one, get a God-given mission, but number two, lay down your own mission. You got to lay down your own mission. First off, they 80 and 83. They ready, they in retirement. Hey, God, I, I got, hey God, you're going to have to use one of these young bucks. I ain't got time to be running from chariots, and I ain't got the knees to do all of this stuff. I'm kind of chilled up right now. We had a plan. You're going to grab me out of retirement, out of a desert. It's like, I have my own mission. God's like, yeah, I'm not done with your life yet. This works the other way, too, by the way. Uh, if you're married, you're 13, 14 years old. You're thinking, listen, I just kind of want to be a teenager. No, we kind of need the Son of God to come through you. You good? Like, what? If you're going to walk out your own God-given mission, sometimes you've got to lay down your own plan. Because sometimes you think your life is headed this direction. But sometimes we've got to be a person that says, I, when am I going to stop making excuses for why I'm not obeying what God called me to do? The last thing that I think is vitally important if we're going to walk out our God-given mission is number three, don't forsake the size of your mission. Sometimes we forsake our mission because it's not sexy, because it's not grandiose. But what I want you to know this weekend is our mission isn't measured by size, it's measured by obedience. And, and I, I think that that's why I'm so enamored by the life of Aaron. Because Aaron is such a shadow person, but he is so crucial to the Exodus narrative. In, in fact, if I'm Aaron, I feel some type of way about Moses. Moses so cold that Jesus invited him to a private meeting on the Mount of Transfiguration. If I'm Aaron, I'm like, how come I don't get to go? I was the one to put my neck on the line with Pharaoh. Moses was too scared. What? What about me? But, but based off of the life of Aaron, he's okay with the shadows. He, he, he's okay not getting the press. He, he's okay just being obedient to what God called him to do. He's okay not getting credit. Don't forsake being one of those people that's behind the scenes, knowing that that's your God-given mission. I love, I love what it says Exodus 8, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, over the canals, and over the pools, and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt. It's like any any depiction, any Moses movie, you don't see Aaron stretching out nothing. But here he is. And the frogs came up and covered the land in Egypt. I mean, it's easy to say yes to God until frogs are jumping around. Now you're kind of questioning some things. You're like, man, I don't know what in the world we're doing. I'm 83. I ain't got time to be chasing frogs. This is weird. (laughs) Exodus 16, verse 2 says, And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. I want to encourage some behind-the-scenes people today that just don't get credit for what they do. And I also want to encourage you to stay on mission. Sometimes your mission can lose its luster because no one else values it. Can I tell you something? God values it. Sometimes you want to quit your mission, especially when it involves leadership. Because you got to work with people. (laughs) And working with people will make you want to (laughs) quit. Marriage can do that to you. School can do that to you. Exodus 17, we see more of the life of Moses. It says, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it up under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one 
on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Your mission may be lifting up the arms of a spouse. Your mission may be lifting up the arms of a kid. Your mission may be overseas. Your mission may not involve any kind of fame. Your mission may not involve climbing a ladder. Your, your mission may just be behind the scenes work. But regardless of the size of your mission, I think there's something powerful about a mom, about a dad, about an executive, about a leader, about a student, about an accountant, about a lawyer, about a principal, about a pastor that can pause long enough to lay their life down to hear from God and get a mission that says, hey, I don't care about the size of this thing. I just, I just want to be found faithful at the end of it. Young person, when you've got a mission, you ain't got time for foolishness. Oh, I, I, I'm on a mission. I ain't got time to cheat. I got a mission. I don't got time to smoke because I'm, I'm on a mission. I'm not looking for affirmation in all the wrong places because social admiration can't give me what my mission can. Students, you can go to school and just try and get through classes and try and get good grades and just try to make the team or just try to fit in, or you could go to school on a mission. And you could go on a mission and then you're not trying to fit in. You're trying to make a difference. And sometimes to make a difference, you got to be different. But you're living your life on a, on a mission. I didn't fit in in school. I was happy not to fit in. If you saw who I went to school with, you'd be like, I'm glad you didn't fit in. Praise God for that. On some level, I just went to school going, you know, I just want to be that kind of person that's on a mission to make people that don't feel like they belong, to make them feel like somebody in the world cares about them. I'm not concerned about my popularity. I'm not concerned. No, 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 that's not. No, I, I, my life has a mission. Teachers, you can go through this school year and just teach, or you can teach with a mission mission in your soul to impact every young person that sits in your classroom. In a few moments, we're going to pray for teachers and pray for students to kick off this year. But I just got to ask you today, do you have a God-given mission? Do you have a God-given mission? That's your ministry, my friend. And if that's you today, I got to tell you what the Apostle Paul told Archippus. Make sure you carry out the ministry that God gave you. God, I thank you so much for coming to church today. God, I pray that each and every person under the sound of my voice would walk in their purpose, that they would walk in their God-given mission, that they would be like a man, like a woman that is on a mission. I pray, God, that this week, we would make some time to get in your word and hear from you. May we be people that it's said of us that we carried out the ministry that you gave us. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I want to give each and every person today an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of their life. If today... As I was just talking about having a mission, and you thought to yourself, man, I, I've never made things right with God. I, I've never had a relationship with Him. Today, I want to give you that opportunity with every head bowed and every eye closed. If that's you today, and you say, hey, Ryan, I want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of my life. I want to have a mission in my life. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ, with every head bowed and every eye closed, will you just slip up your hand and say, Ryan, that's me? Ryan, that's me, ma'am, I see your hand, that's awesome. Is there anybody else? I see your hand, that's awesome. I see your hand, that's awesome. Anybody else? Hey, can we all say this prayer together? Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I ask now that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my future and my past to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. Come on, can we make some noise for every single person?
that gave your heart to Christ. Best decision you've ever made. Hey, if you made that decision today, we want to put a, a little starting point in your hand. And uh, you can get that in the front. We'd love to pray with you. Or you can text the phrase, I am saved, to the number 64600. And we'll send you a digital link to download that. It'll just walk you through what to do now that you've made this incredible decision. Once again, can we make some noise for every single person that gave their heart to Christ?